What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I want to do a quick video showing you guys how to set up SSH keys on Ubuntu 20.04. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I want to show you guys SSH and how to actually create RSA key pairs to secure your connections to Linux systems that you're trying to access remotely. Now SSH stands for Secure Shell and it's an encrypted protocol used to administer and communicate with servers. When working with different servers like CentOS, Ubuntu, if you have a server set up, uh, chances are chances are you'll be spending a lot of time in the terminal and connecting to the server through SSH. This is a great tool for administrators to, to use to actually modify Linux servers remotely. So in this video, I wanna focus on setting up the SSH keys and I'll do it in Ubuntu 20.04. And this is an important thing for you to do in order to secure logging into your server. Because of course, I've talked about my server that I have set up. Well, as soon as you set up a SSH server and connect it to the internet, different hackers are going to find it and start banging on your server, trying to brute force into your SSH connection. And there are some specific things you want to set up in SSH in order to prevent people from connecting to your server or brute forcing your server. And this is one of the things that I want to highlight is basically SSH keys and then you can go into the SSH configuration and turn off password authentication, which will prevent people from brute forcing your server unless somebody gets a hold of your key pair. So let's get started on showing you guys how to set this up. Okay, so I'm logged into my Zubuntu 20.04 desktop environment in virtual machine. I also have my Ubuntu 20.04 server running in the background as well. And that's the server that we'll be using. And then this will be the client that we'll be using for this demonstration. I'm gonna create the key pair uh, using the command line on my Zubuntu desktop, as well as uh, adding the key to the server via the command line. And I'll show you how to do that later on. But the first thing we wanna do is actually create the RSA key pairs. And it's a very simple process to do that. And I'll show you right now. It's uh, one command is simply SSH dash keygen and press enter. And this will go through and create our key pair. So we have a few things that we need to respond to. It'll pop up with questions. On this one, we'll select the default because that's where it typically shows your, stores your RSA keys. Uh, it stores it in home and then your, your home directory name and then dot SS. H, which is a hidden folder, and then ID underscore RSA. So we could press enter, that's the default location. And then you, what you wanna do is put a password on it. Well, I typically put a password on my keys. Uh, that way people can't use my key unless they know the password. So first thing you will have to get my key and then know what the password is for my key. And one thing you could do on your local machine is they have what they call a key ring. You can store that password in your key ring on your Linux uh, desktop environment. That way you don't have to type in a password every single time. You can set it up to where when you log into the system, it'll automatically unlock your RSA key uh, without you having to type in a password every single time. But like I said, just put a password on it. Uh, I'm going to put a quick password on it right fast. It's going to ask you twice. Boom. And then it creates that key pair. And so that's pretty much it right there. It uses uh, SHA-256 when generating the keys. So now you get to go. And as you can see right here, I just wanted to show you uh, your identification has been saved in ID uh, underscore RSA. And then your public key, which is the one we need to store on the server that we'll be connecting to via the SSH keys is stored in the same directory, but it's it has ID underscore RSA dot pub, meaning public key. And then this is the key fingerprint and the account that's associated with it. So Josh at Zubuntu 20. Okay, so as I stated earlier, the next step is actually copying the public key to the server that you wanna to connect to. 
and they have a built-in feature as well in in the SSH client. It's it's a command called SSH copy dash ID, and this is what you want to use to copy to that remote server or remote host. And let's go down and run that command now. And one thing you need to know before you do this is the IP address of the remote host that you're trying to connect to. And I know what my IP address is for that server. So let's go down and type in the command. And the command is ssh-copy-id. And then what you want to do is type in your user account on that server as well as the IP address. So 192.168. One six eight dot ten dot one zero three. That's the server on my network. So if we press enter on that. This will go through and copy that key to the server. And one thing it's going to ask you is to log in or give your password because it's pretty much a SSH program, which uh, it's it's kind of like OrSync or something, or it's it's just a an application that simply connects via SSH and copies the key over to the server. Okay, so as you can see, it goes through the whole process and it breaks it down for you. Uh, SSH copy dash ID. This is the info. It says attempting to log in with new key to filter out any that are already installed. So if you had some already installed, it'll search for the for them. And then right here, it says one key remain remain to be installed. If you're a prompt now it is to install the new key and that's where this comes in where it asks you for your password and then right here it breaks it out it just says number of keys added one now I'll try logging into the machine uh using ssh and it should use your key it shouldn't prompt you for any password so if we go ssh my user account on that server as well as the ip address so 192.168.10 dot one zero three press enter and like i said you can save this in what they call your key ring which i'll go down and do it just to show you but anytime you access that private key it's going to ask you for your password that's one downfall of actually putting a password on the private key but the thing is if somebody gets your private key then they will have to know what that password is. And hopefully you made it something different from what your login password is to the, to the system. But it's stored in your key ring. So uh, once you unlock that key, it'll go down and log you in and it won't ask you for that password ever again, as long as you logged in from this system because it's the password for your private key is stored in the key ring, like I stated. So let me exit out and just show you guys again. And this won't give you that much of an idea, but because I think when you unlock the key, it stays open, you know, for a short amount of time. It could be like five minutes or so. So if I didn't store it in my key ring, it wouldn't, it still wouldn't ask me for that password, but right away. But then after that time is expired, then it'll ask you for that password again. But, um, since we stored it in our key ring, we could just hit, you know, SSH and it'll log us in, you know, to that server without asking us for any passwords. Okay, now lastly, since we're logged into the server, I just want to go down and show you guys how to disable password authentication since we're connected to the server SSH. And we need to edit the SSH configuration file. And the command to do that is simply sudo uh, nano, you can use vi or vim. Uh, and then etc and then we want to go to the ssh uh, directory uh, and this is the ssh configuration file so ssh and let's tab it out d underscore config and this is the actual file you want to modify uh, don't get confused with the ssh uh, underscore config that is the config for this server to actually connect you can set certain configurations for connecting to servers and then the server that's actually running ssh that would have the daemon so that's why it's sshd underscore config so you want to make sure you go into that file to edit the daemon config so if you press enter there it's going to ask you for your password because we're running as sudo if we go in here we want to look for one line 
and it's a couple other things you could change in here i won't go through it i think i did a video on actually securing your server a lot of what's in that video still applies with ubuntu 20.04 server um but i just wanted to show you this one thing since it's tying just the ssh uh keys and one thing you want to do is right here this is the actual line you want to uncomment and put it as no and this is simply password authentication you want to turn that off that way when people brute force it doesn't matter how much they brute force your server uh if they don't have a ssh key or any type of key on your system then they won't be able to get in because password authentication is turned off so you don't have to worry about anybody brute forcing like crazy on your server it just gets annoying but this will prevent people from actually getting in and brute forcing and another thing i normally turn off is uh root login which i think they have that turn off by default but you might want to check that as well so now that that's done let's go down and uh, hit control x and type y for yes and this will save that configuration file and lastly we have to reboot the ssh service which will most likely kill my connection right now uh, but i'll go down and do it anyway so you guys can see and the command to to restore ssh is simply sudo uh system ctl uh restart uh ssh and press enter and then let's actually log out and log back in Now, in order to test that password authentication is turned off, I wanted to go down and show you guys um, or try to connect to that one server uh, using my, my main machine over SSH. So if we type SSH 192.168.10.103, which is that server, and let me type in the IP address right. If we press enter and since it's the first time connecting to this server uh, from my main machine, it'll try to save the fingerprint. So we could type yes, that's fine. And as you can see, you get a permissions denied. Uh, you have to have a public key in order to log into the server. So be very careful with this. Uh, make sure you don't lose your key or go into that server and delete your private key and then log out of the server. You'll lose connection to that server. And if it's a headless server somewhere, then you won't be able to get back into it because SSH only uses SSH keys when you turn that option on. So be very careful with this. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I hope you got something out of this. If you plan on setting up your home lab or home network, this is a good thing to do when you setting up at when you setting up a server. You want to go on and set up SSH keys. That way you can log into the system remotely. You can open up ports. Uh, the default port for SSH is port 22. So you'll have to go into your router and open up that port, setting up port forwarding and then pointing it to that server IP address. That way you can connect to the server from the outside. And there are a couple apps out there uh, that I use on my Android device, like Juice SSH, that'll allow you to connect to your server from your mobile phone. And you can actually run commands on your server, you know, from your Android device. It opens up a terminal and everything. It's pretty cool. So set up a server, install some keys, you know, check it out for yourself and see if this will work for your situation. But please like, share and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content and i really want to say i appreciate a lot of the new subscribers that i've received on the channel i'm doing my best to try to hold a high standard to the videos that i'm doing uh so just bear with me i'm not that great at doing these youtube videos but i just want to really get the information out there to anyone that would want to listen and learn about linux so like i said i hope you guys enjoyed the video Please like, share, and subscribe, and of course, keep it techie.